imagine you're a normal, happy child, part of a picture-perfect family. As a youngster, the world is your oyster with unlimited possibilities. Then one day, as a young teenager, the world changes. And we were in the car driving, totally normal day, and out of nowhere, I just felt this weight fall onto my eyeball. It's like the weirdest sensation, um, just this heaviness. Uh, I believe it was the next morning I, I started to wake up with um, a little vision loss. Neither Allie Guthy or her mom, Victoria Jackson, realized it at the time, but that was the first of what was to become numerous bouts of optic neuritis and transverse myelitis, painful spinal cord inflammation that's often misdiagnosed as multiple sclerosis. But Allie actually had an extremely rare autoimmune disease, neuromyelitis optica, or NMO. To watch your child be in that kind of pain and not know if every time is, you know, is she gonna go back to normal? Is it going to not only abate the pain, but is it going to, is she, will she be fine again? That's not a mother being overly dramatic. When Allie was first diagnosed, doctors gave her four years to live and painfully little was known then about NMO. That's when Victoria said no one, and especially not her daughter, was dying on her watch. So she went to see one of the few scientists working on NMO, Dr. Brian Weinschenker at the Mayo Clinic. I said, are you doing any research? And he said, yes, I'm, I am doing some research. And I'm like, great. Well, I'm a woman with a checkbook. I'm a mom on a mission. You're doing research. We're going to get to know each other. And we're gonna, I'm going to start a foundation. And I'm going to find a cure for this disease. That was the beginning of the Guthy Jackson Charitable Foundation. It has spurred tremendous knowledge about NMO and the autoimmune process. They've created a biorepository for blood samples from thousands of NMO and MS patients. They've created and funded patient conferences, a pharmaceutical industry council, and annual international scientific meetings, insisting that everyone involved share their data. It's been 10 years since Allie's diagnosis. Aggressive disease management has allowed Allie to go to college, be the president of the Student Government Association, and she's now a first-year law student at UCLA. Still, there's no cure. And so I would be lying if I said I didn't have those days where, you know, everybody has that, where, you know, you, I have an, a cramp in my back and I'm, you know, it's, it's just a back cramp, but my mind, you know, goes through all the what ifs of, you know, what if, um, you know, this is the one that I don't come back from. So Allie leads her best life, a little in denial, but comforted in the knowledge that even if a cure doesn't come for her, she will have helped others. We are at the threshold of rewriting the future for all those who now and one day will be impacted by autoimmune diseases. I'm Allie Guffey, and I have NMO, and I'm just so honored to be a part of it and to know that my experience, you know, will hopefully bring peace and love and happiness to, to other lives is just, I mean, that's what gets me through it. It's also what drives Victoria, keeping Allie and all the other NMO patients in mind patient centricity. Well, to me, it's always been about the patients. You can't just do the research in a vacuum with really understanding what's going on with the patients. And you need um, not only their hearts, their souls, their engagement, their information. That's the key. I've always believed if you set an intention, and for me, through the power of love and very clear intention, that I was going to find a cure, not only for my daughter, but for everyone who has this disease, 